right, welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We're heading straight to a second conversation where we look at the decision of lawmakers uh, to reconsider uh, the gender bill right here. And just before then, let's uh, take you through the background of this. Now, the House of Representatives have overturned itself on the three gender-related bills that failed to pass in the ongoing amendment to the 1999 Constitution. The gender bills are Bill 36 to expand the scope of citizenship by registration and Bill 37 to provide for affirmative action for women in political party administration and Bill 38 to provide criteria for qualification to become an indigent of a state in Nigeria and those drop uh, Bill 35 to provide special seat for women in the National Assembly and the State Houses of Assembly and Bill 68 to give women a quota in the federal and state executive council or ministerial and commissionership seats. The three bills, according to the Speaker of the House, would be included in the second badge of amendment uh, to be considered in the fourth week time. Thus, the consideration of the gender bill translates into voting for the bill and joining us to make sense of all of this is a senior legal practitioner and notary public, Leonard Ayago. Uh, it's good to have you join us this morning, Leonard. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me. Good morning, uh, viewers. Okay, so um, let's start off with the argument surrounding this bill. As much as this bill was actually put out for consideration, amongst the 68 uh, recommendations, it actually did not uh, get the yes of the lawmakers. And the argument around it is the fact the law does not, the law is very equal before, I mean, treats everyone equally. So there's no special seats or, I mean, everyone is treated as one. And so these are some of the arguments surrounding it. What, what do you make about this particular bill? Uh, mostly that has been highlighted, the three bills. Well, um, if you look at section one sub one of the constitution that talks about the supremacy of the constitution, and um, the combined provision of um, the Electoral Act and the Nigerian Constitution, just like you already said, um, there's no discrimination on the basis of sex, religion, and all that, in terms of political offices, um, uh, going for political offices and all that. So if you look at the present constitution, there's no discrimination. Whether you are a male or a female, you can aspire for any um, office you desire, either elective or appointive. But the reality on ground is different. Uh, different that um, a lot of people believe that the platform for a female to ascend to political office, especially that of elective office, is, is very skewed uh, in terms of party administration. But I think this point that I want us to look at the positive side of this development, which is more administrative policies of previous um, government or even the pre present government. For instance, in Cross River State. Um, there was this, there's a deliberate ploy by the um, the government to encourage women to participate in politics. You know, um, I, I think I can be described as one of those advocates of um, gender sensitive person in terms of uh, allowing or encourage women to participate in governance, in terms of going for elective office or going for appointing office and all that. So, for instance, in Cross Valley, there was a time all the vice chairmen and some chairmen of council were and a lot to have a number of uh, persons in the House of Assembly. It was a deliberate ploy by the administration to encourage women in uh, participation because that is the only way you can have um, this kind of um, gender, being gender sensitive. Because if you follow the law, as it is that there is no specific um, allocation for a woman to occupy any elective office. So it was a deliberate ploy by any government that uh, is gender sensitive. Okay, for instance, if I'm going to appoint, if I'm a sitting governor, I'm going to appoint 20 commissioners. I want to say, okay, consider to seven for uh, uh, for women. And of course, it, it same applies to elective offices. So that's why I said I use the cross river state as an example. It's been sustained from the previous administration to the present administration. It's been there will be women inclusive um, uh, in governance, either elective or appointing office. But I think the current agitation is to make it more legal, make it. Um, more definite that okay if for instance you have a 25 member um house of assembly 35 percent of that should be for women special seat for that but then we should also understand that um with the greatest respect to the the, the female gender 
they have to be deliberate, they have to be interested, they have to be that real orientation. Because I've had a lot of meetings with uh, female group, um, with the greatest respect, most, them, most of them feel that politics is dirty, they don't want to come in, they, their names will be called, they, they will call their names that are not um, verifiable and all that stuff. So, basically, that orientation by a woman to that self-consciousness that they can contribute. Look, women are very, very industrious. And that is my um, appeal for any friendship with the female uh, folk. We have industrious women that have distinguished themselves in law, in medicine, and all that field, even in journalism. So when it comes to governance, why do they shy away with it, from it? What is so special about going for elective office, asking for people to vote, talking to persons? Because they have, uh, in most cases, the, the women have been proven to be better administrators than the uh, male folk. You know? So if you have that orientation by the female folk that they can do well in politics, just like they are doing in other fields, that is the starting point. But beyond that, I equally believe that we can consciously, as a, as a nation, um, provide that enabling law that will make a woman to, just like we have free basic education at the uh, uh, sit at the primary level, make you. Leonard Ayongo, uh, apologies, I think it's a bit of a network issue, but Leonard, if you're there, uh, can you hear us? All right, we, we will do our very best to reconnect with Leonard Ayongo, who is a senior legal practitioner and notary public as soon as we can. Uh, to continue to take his analysis of this situation. Uh, of course, we're bringing you uh, uh, news that um, the House of Representatives has made a U-turn on its uh, stance regarding the Constitutional Amendment uh, voting that was done last week, uh, particularly three bills uh, regarding gender issues. One of them being, uh, uh, three of them actually, out of the five gender bills rejected by the lawmakers during the voting on the Constitutional Amendment bills on March 1, 2022. So, um, three out of five, maybe not too bad. Um, if you asked, I you know, would have loved to take his thoughts on that, uh, the fact that only three out of five uh, are being upturned. Um, also, um, we look into the details of this, as Messi has already said. The first one is expanding the scope of citizenship by registration. Uh, also, affirmative action for women in political party administration. And then you have uh, uh, the criteria to be an indigent of a state in particular. Um, the bill seeks to amend Section 26 2A of the 1999 Constitution by opening citizenship registration to male and female. So it means that if you uh, are a foreigner married to a Nigerian, you can apply for Nigerian citizenship. Uh, that's a, a male married to a Nigerian uh, female, uh, not just a, a, the foreign females married to Nigerian males. You also have, of course, um, uh, the Section 31 and 318 sub 1, uh, the interpretation section of the Constitution allowing for a woman to become an indigent of her husband's states after at least six, at least six years uh, of marriage. Um, uh, for me, you know, I, I, I think uh, it is a tick of who has been, uh, you know, lamenting this thing called certificate of origin. I have never understood it. You know, I've had a chance to see what other countries do, and I don't understand why you need a certificate to decide where or to be approved where you belong to in Nigeria. It is not normal. And I hope Nigeria is, it is, it is not normal. How can you, you be prevented from belonging to any part of your own country? You know, and now, even as a woman who's married to her husband, you have to pass through certain criteria you know, and fulfill certain criteria, rather, and overcome certain bottlenecks to be seen as an indigent of your husband's state. Every Nigerian should be free to belong to any part of the country they desire. Just they, as every if Nigerian. If you live there, you pay your taxes there, maybe for, they can say you've lived there for a, a number of years, you're from here. That's it, you know, and, and because the country is too divided. And these are the issues that, that a, a, a leadership in a, in a different mentality should solve. Just as, uh, you know, everyone across the country is entitled to own properties. I mean, the law would say that you have a right to acquire properties, you have a right to move, and all of that. But typical, like I always cite, is that of course of the state. At the time where you had, you know, the current judge of the state, 
uh, who wasn't really allowed. She got to a point where she was chief supposed judge to be, of yeah, chief, chief judge of Cross River State, and she, she there was a time where there was this debate. It wasn't actually put in. It wasn't put out categorically whether that was the case. Okay. But however, her, her state of origin. Yeah, state of origin okay. was the a reason major concern. Why, uh, governor, yeah. didn't support her. Not, not necessarily. The governor did his due diligence. I mean, he follows okay. the procedure. Okay. So you have the uh, uh, judicial council uh, who would actually nominate and send to approval. He yeah. has to go through. Yeah. But where the bottom, you know, the bottleneck yeah. actually lied was within the lawmakers. And at the end of the day, the issue of interest actually, you know, w was a major concern. Uh, the, the lawmakers at the time who voted against her not coming because they had the law, and it still brings us back to the so issue they said of our she constitution. Wasn't from Cross River State. No, it wasn't. It wasn't on that premise. It wasn't categorically was on that premise. premise. Now it was put in the sense that where would your interests lie? You know, some kind of question, very technical well, question. Okay, and interest. Was, 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 it, was it that she was an indigenous of Cross River? She's State? not an indigenous of Cross River State. Originally She's married to, to a Cross, Cross River. Okay. She has served in the civil service for about 30 years plus. Of Cross and then River he gets, State. yeah, of course. And now, so the, the question was. And, and she's the, a judge the, in, uh, the, in the Cross River State. The question was actually put out whether where her interest would, you know, lie if she becomes, you know, chief judge of the state. And he, he felt like, you know, the lawmakers who voted against her not being convinced confirmed the chief judge was in question at the time because they were wondering would her alliance, whose interest would she protect? And so just like you've mentioned in, in all of this is the fact that we're constantly, you know, not united. The yeah. issue of unity is a big issue for us. We, so you can, wh why do we have to even state? I mean, if you look at our forms, you go everywhere. Uh, there's always state of origin. You, yes, so you, but, but we, we, we have you a nationality guest, and then you ask you state of the origin. Line. Well, it's uh, good um, to have yes. you join us back, Leonardo Nyago. Um, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you very well. Okay, so I would like you to continue with your thoughts. You have mentioned that it would actually help the women be inclusive in governance. It would give them a way, even though the law um, is very, very, uh, very, very deliberate and very definite as regards um, everyone. There's no gender disparity when it comes to the law. But you have talked about the reality, and there's a need for us to have a law which will make, you know, create an opportunity for women, you know, to be represented. But um, do you see this reconsideration uh, that has actually gone through the process of rejection? Do you consider this fact that they're going to reconsider it, according to the speaker, you know, maybe in some time, two weeks, three weeks, or four weeks' time, uh, you would have um, this bill being reconsidered? Will this mean that the bill will be considered? Will, they, will these lawmakers vote and uh, uh, have it as a yes? Yes, um, it's a good development. Yesterday, I was to visit a friend at the National Assembly, and when I got there, uh, it was protest. And I, I, I felt like joining the protest for um, the, the gender bills. So the National Assembly was occupied yesterday. So the mood of the country right now is um, for those bills to be reconsidered. And I think it's a good development that the National Assembly wants to reconsider those bills that were initially rejected. Uh, but beyond that, I was having a thought that the, the women should have this self-consciousness -conscious, and belief. If you can make it in journalism, if you can make it in law, if you can make it in medicine and other field of endeavor, you can also make it in governance. Deliberately, I've come across very wonderful legislators that are women um, and administrators. But I think uh, the drawback uh, that, I, that I envisage or I see is that most women with respect don't want to, even on their own, come to the political field. You know, because because they feel that it's dirty in quote. Somebody will insult you, will call you names that you don't have. So um, the, the, the women folk have to go beyond that, um, have that self belief, that orientation that they can do it. And you can break this, uh, break this even by having that self belief first and foremost. So that is the starting point. But these bills that are being reconsidered, I, I, I want the, the groups that have been protesting and every other person like us and, every, and even the media to control the spotlight so that. Um, the, day, uh, the light of the day, but importantly, beyond the 35% that has been envisaged, I think it is possible for um, the female folk to actually go beyond 35%. You have the capacity, you have the competence, you are industrious, you are well educated. So, what stops you? You, you, are, you have the appeal because if you go to a community, I know that there are some male dominated communities that look at a woman as uh, somebody who should be at the kitchen. But that is far beyond that. If you show capacity, if you show uh, confidence, if you contribute meaningfully to the community, then 
the the the, the community wants to to call him for any uh, position in, in government. So I believe that that self consciousness is good. Then the bill uh, that is being reconsidered will be an added. Uh, uh, to me, it will be an added to It will be a, it will be an extra advantage, not actually the key. Because even if you grant that a five percent um, uh, slot for for women, we still need women to come out. We still need women to be encouraged. We still need a woman that has the audacity and guts to participate in governance. And so far, I can tell you for good that. The, the women that are in legislative seats that are in governance are proving their metal. Hmm. All right. Uh, we have to leave it at that. But of course, the uh, two uh, bills that were not um, uh, reconsidered extra seats for women in legislative houses and 20% uh, quota for women for appointment to federal and state cabinets um, not listed in this uh, reconsideration. Uh, thank you very much for your time and for joining us uh, on the breakfast this morning. It's been a thrill having you, Leonard Ayogo, um, who is a senior legal practitioner and notary public. Thank you so much for your time, Leonard. It's my honor. Thank you so much for having me. Right. Well, um, Mercy, I think this shows the power of uh, people uh, moving out, coming together as one to make a demand. And there are so many things that we need people to speak on um, in the country today. Hopefully we can take a cue. Yes, definitely. And, uh, you know, I, we were hoping that, you know, we had time to talk about it. the addition of 111 seats even being considered would actually increase the cost of, you know, having uh, the legislative arm of government in Nigeria. You know what that means already. But we will take a break now and that's the end of our conversation. Definitely return tomorrow with more interesting issues. If you missed out on any part of it, it's all right to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We're Plus TV Africa. Plus TV Africa, do subscribe to YouTube channel as well. This is Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bopo. And I'm Kofi Bartels. We return tomorrow with more on the breakfast radio on Plus TV Africa. Till then, keep watching. Good morning.